Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to explain a beautiful movie starring the one and only Kate Winslet, Joaquin Phoenix's priest, and extremely beautiful girl Rebecca Palmer. The movie is based on Napoleonic era, so without wasting time, let's begin. The film opens with Marquis de Sade, a renowned writer known for his provocative tales. Despite their popularity, people read his works in secrecy. Set in Paris in 1794, the authorities harshly oppose such literature and free-thinking individuals. A woman faces punishment for her independent actions and relationships. She lived freely, and Marquis observed her punishment. Years later, we find Marquis confined in Charenton Mental Asylum. Imprisoned for his writings, the intent was to prevent him from continuing his controversial works. We then meet Madeline, a laundry girl at the asylum. Madeline visits Marquise's cell and subtly signals him. He hands her a few pages of a new story hidden within the linens. She carefully conceals the papers as she leaves. Calmer, the head priest and caretaker of the asylum, is seen interacting with the inmates. Meanwhile, Madeline approaches the main gate and discreetly passes the pages to a man waiting outside. This man publishes Marquis's stories. Subsequently, we see his books being sold, eagerly read by many. The scene shifts to King Napoleon, whose minister reads a Marquis story, criticizing its vulgarity. Napoleon orders Marquis's execution, but the minister argues it might increase his notoriety. The minister then consults physician Royer Collard. He is skilled in inflicting pain. The minister informs him about the Marquis and Napoleon's scheme. We observe Calmere teaching Madeline, guiding her in comprehending and writing phrases. There seems to be strong chemistry between Madeline and Calmere. In the next scene, Madeline reads the Marquise's story to her friends, who become aroused by the tales. One of the girls feels repulsed by the stories. Madeline asks her to leave as the others are enjoying them. The following morning, Madeline is seen delivering fresh linens to the inmates. When she reaches the Marquis's cell, he invites her in. Since Madeline has the keys, she enters. The cell is adorned with artwork inspired by these fantasies. Madeline then gives the Marquis money collected from the sale of his books. The Marquis is in love with Madeline and asks her to sit as he has written a personal story for her. However, the story comes with a condition, a kiss for each page. She complies, kissing him for each page, but then he grabs her and gives her a French kiss. Meanwhile, Calmeri approaches the cell, but the Marquis continues enjoying the exchange of pages. For the climax, the Marquis asks her to sit on his lap. He then tries to touch her inappropriately, but she slaps him and takes all the pages. Calmeri arrives at that moment. Later, Collard arrives at the asylum. He tells Calmeri that Napoleon is concerned about one of the inmates. Calmeri tries to assure him that the Marquis has changed. Collard inquires about the Marquis's activities and shows him a book published by the Marquis. Calmer is shocked to see it. Collard demands that he control the Marquis, or else Napoleon will shut down the asylum. Calmeri informs him that he will no longer be allowed to publish any books. Calmeri attempts to persuade him to cease writing these stories. The Marquis agrees, which pleases Collard. Next, Collard visits an orphanage and offers to adopt a beautiful girl. She happily goes home with him. But at night, he tears her clothes and abuses her violently. We see a thirst for revenge in her eyes. Later, two boys recount the Marquis's story to the girl. She becomes very excited and urges them not to stop. The following evening, Dr. Collard and others visit an asylum to watch a performance by the inmates. The Marquis has prepared a play that reenacts the abuse suffered by the orphaned girl at the hands of Collard. This enrages Collard, causing him to leave the show in anger. Calmer then goes to the Marquis's cell and confiscates all his writing materials, intending to make him stop writing. The Marquis is deeply upset and feels empty without his quills and ink. His wife visits Collard, demanding that he either cure the Marquis or punish him severely. The Marquis devises a plan. He uses chicken bones and red wine to write on his bedsheet. Madeline copies the story onto paper and smuggles it outside. Dr. Collard grows suspicious and instructs Calmera to monitor the Marquis closely. Calmera removes everything from the Marquis' cell, including his chair. Meanwhile, Dr. Collard's wife is seen at the market, purchasing one of the Marquis' books, revealing that she is a fan who regularly reads his stories. 
Marquis shatters a mirror and uses his blood to write stories on his clothes. He asks Madeline to open the door. She enters, sees his work, and becomes happy, kissing him. Later, he joins the other inmates in the dining room. Collard orders his men to beat him and lock him in his cell. Calmere enters the cell and takes away Marquise's clothes. Meanwhile, Madeline is punished for unlocking his cell. Calmere intervenes to save her, causing Madeline to develop feelings for him. Calmere then questions Madeline about why she reads Marquis's controversial stories. She explains that her life has been devoid of joy, and his stories bring color to it. She imagines herself in the tales, playing the parts. Elsewhere, the doctor's wife flirts with a workman, showing him Marquis's book filled with paintings, expressing a desire to experience the same but needing a teacher. At midnight, Madeline, addicted to Marquis's stories, becomes anxious. She sneaks into Calmera's room. Though he is a priest and has suppressed desires, she challenges him, kissing him. He momentarily loses control and kisses her back before pushing her away, citing his devotion to God. The next morning, Calmer tries to explain himself, but Madeline is angry. Meanwhile, Collard's wife is seen with the workman. They plan to escape together. She makes him write a farewell note to Collard before they resume playing games. She leaves with him, leaving the note behind. Collard discovers the note and the book she read, leading him to start torturing Marcus. After the torture, Marquis is placed under maximum security. Calmer sends Madeline far away to separate her from Marquis. Madeline visits Marquis one last time and requests a final story. He agrees to dictate it that night. At night, Marquis dictates the story to his new cellmate, who passes it on to the next inmate, continuing until it reaches Madeline. However, during this process, an inmate uses a candle to set a bedsheet on fire. The fire alarms everyone, leading to the unlocking of doors and ensuing chaos. Calmer rescues a girl being abused by inmates. Meanwhile, Brousseau captures Madeline, preventing her escape. Calmera searches for her, but can't find her until he reaches the laundry room, where he sees blood everywhere. He discovers that Brousseau has brutally killed Madeline and drowned her body. In response, Collard and Calmer cut out Marquise's tongue to prevent him from telling any more tales. Calmeri approaches Madeline's lifeless body and removes her dress. He hallucinates that she is still alive and begins to play games with her. A statue of Christ weeps tears of blood, snapping him out of his hallucination. Later, he visits Marquise's cell, where the walls are covered with the Marquise's writings. Calmer prays for him as Marcus takes his final breath. Months pass, and Dr. Collard is now in charge of the asylum. A new caretaker arrives, and under Collard's strict training, the inmates work mechanically, printing books for his profit. Collard shows the caretaker the inmates who are still confined, including Calmera, who desperately begs for quills and paper. Madeline's mother provides Calmera with the writing materials, and he begins to write in her honor. This movie ends at a sad note. So friends, that's all in today's video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will meet you in the next video. Till then, peace out.